Eric, can you tell us about the repercussions for the comprehensive peace agreement between North and South Sudan? Thank you. I will do. I will focus on, on both the repercussions on the comprehensive peace agreement and on the action of the agencies, humanitarian and recovery agencies in the rest of the country. I'll start with the political dimension. As Julie said, the, the impact of uh, the request of the arrest warrant extends well beyond our school. Um, I had the privilege of being an, an observer for the government of Italy and a resource person in the EGAD peace process. And so I've been able to observe you know, the interaction of uh, the National Congress Party and the SLM in that capacity. And what Julius refers to, you know, this tension between the hard lines and moderates in, in, the, um, in the then government of Sudan in the NTP, I've, I've been able to witness that you know, directly. And I see, you know, as one of the first impacts of the action, you know, of, of, of the request of the arrest warrant, seeing a return to the hardliners um, pushing ahead. I think, I think what we're seeing these days is, is again, hardliners gaining the, the upper hand. More problematically, I think the request of the arrest warrant lowers um, any leverage the observer countries, the, the signatories to, you know, the um, observer countries who have signed to um, the comprehensive peace agreement will have um, to, you know, ensure that this agreement that is already so fraught with difficulties, the, you know, the implementation of which is so challenging, um, can be followed up more robustly you know, with diplomatic pressure. The point of pressure has gone. I think Julian and uh, Alex have said that quite eloquently in, the, in their article in The Guardian this morning. Um, what, what is the, you know, the point of pressure when the end result can only be you know, uh, for the President of Sudan to end up in the head? You've lost the pressure point. And that makes it very difficult for the mechanism of monitoring for the CPA, such as the Assessment and Evaluation Commission, to continue to you know, use leverage for these fundamental landmarks that we had this year in the implementation of the agreement, you know, the elections, the border demarcation, the arbitration around that VA in the Hague, you know, these were all fundamental appointments, where again, you know, the, the possibility for the observer countries to exercise uh, some kind of diplomatic pressure would be much more problematic. Um, we've also entered in a very uncharted diplomatic territory. Uh, everybody is struggling to understand how we, will, we are going to engage politically with uh, uh, you know, the, the president of Sudan. I mean, I think that the legal advice that is emerging is that, you know, of, of course, the presumption of innocence stands uh, until it's proven you know, um, um, wrong. Um, and so, you know, the, 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 the other states will have to continue to operate as normal uh, to a certain extent. But again, if it does make um, any attempt of, you know, accompanying this uh, political transformation of the country for which, you know, so many of us have worked very, very challenging, and you raised the question mark about, you know, the, the, how the elections will be conducted later this year. On the humanitarian side, um, Julie has, has, uh, has mentioned how the impact of uh, um, the, the decision of the government of Sudan to revoke the registration of uh, um, foreseen organizations will extend well beyond that school. It, it is their national registration that has been revoked. These are not agencies that only operate in Darfur. These are agencies that operate throughout the Sudan. These are agencies that operate in Eastern Sudan where the levels of vulnerability are actually worsening Darfur, where malnutrition indicators and mobility indicators are worsening Darfur, and where you know, fundamental life-saving aid uh, will uh, be lacking you know, from now on. These are also the agencies that are operating in the three areas, a very fragile, volatile part of the country where, you know, as we know last year, we've had you know, the, the, the main incident in the implementation of the peace agreement, which was the clashes in ADA in May last year, which have created between 50 and 80,000 uh, new IDPs. Um, it is also, it is believed, the agencies that work in the South. It is not totally clear to what extent it will apply to, you know, agencies that operate uh, in, in, in the territory that is under the jurisdiction of the government of Southern Sudan, but I think the latest understanding is that those with national registration will also have to leave southern Sudan. This poses enormous, enormous challenges to everything that we have been doing as humanitarian and recovery organizations to support the peace process. Um, we have about 2.4 million <coughs> people that returned to the three areas and in the south over the last three, four years. And at ODI, we've been doing research on you know, how challenging this reintegration process has been. Maggie Buchanan-Smith, I see, is also here. We've been doing research together on you know, how difficult it how difficult it has been to support the rate of need. The, the, the capacity to support the rate of need was already so limited, would now be non-existent. 
in southern Kurdistan. I've been I've spent three weeks in Darmistria in October doing more research you know, on, on the whole complexity of ABA and looking at at the mystery. It's really worth saying. Finally, you know, Arab groups are getting on the map. The vulnerability of Arab groups, not just in Darfur but in neighboring regions like southern Kurdistan, are starting to be addressed by the agencies. This will not be possible. The main agencies that were operating in southern Kurdistan, Mercy Coast, the Education of the United Care, PADCO, NSC, have all had the registration revoked. And this will have a very, very serious impact on, on a region that is already so volatile, where you know, there is a danger that you know, armed military groups, of which there are many in the western sector of southern Kurdistan, may take the chance of, you know, um, sort of, uh, of furthering the violence that already exists in the state. I'd just like to um, to conclude um, using the you know the opportunity of having the, the ambassador of Sudan here um, and, uh, and and in my capacity both as a program leader here at the humanitarian policy group, but if I may also as a former you know observer and, and uh, a little person in the eager peace process to to request the, the government of Sudan to reconsider urgently this decision um, of revoking the registration for the agencies, you know, bearing in mind the consequences, the consequences for so many citizens of Sudan and, and the danger of you know, furthering instability in, in a region of the country which is already so volatile and for a peace process which is already so fraught with challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah.